I, I think it's like also like another way to impact it when um when you don't have consecration. There's like a lot of things like a noyotrons and if he has archer protectors and whatnot. Uh, I think it definitely leans towards hosty here in the overall edge of who's going to be able to have the advantage. But uh, mm -hmm. I'm definitely still going to try and back up my claim. I think Faramir still has a big chance of taking this series. All right, let's see how it'll uh, play out. It did open up Warrior versus Paladin though, and uh, it's a pretty damn good Paladin hand, but it is also a pretty good uh, Warrior hand. You have the Armorsmith, you have the Cruel Task, you have the Acolyte. So it's a pretty big deal here. Um, and I think what we're going to see is a Cruel Task on the Juggler after the attack to kill it. Right. Are we on? And Hosty is the Warrior player? Or is he the Paladin player? That's a good question. I don't think we have the hosty overlays up yet. I think Farmir is the paladin player based off the way the overlay is set. Mm -hmm. um, and also he has he has Bolvar in his deck. I thought that card was considered trash tier, Crib. It is it is pretty trash tier. But um, <laughs> sometimes it's pretty good tempo play. Like, if you can clear the board, if you can do like a Wild Pyro, Equality, and then Bolvar with 9 right. mana, it can like just completely change the game. So it's it's got its moments. Um, you really need a certain type of deck to float that card, though. I don't think it's standard in any kind of Paladin deck right now. Alright, well, uh, does Hosty have a way to deal with all these 1-1s? I think in the back of mind he's worried about Quartermaster. Is it time for Bolvar though? What what's its stats currently? Four seven? Mm, I can't really see. Five seven. So it was four seven. Well, Bolvar, meet Owl. Owl, Bolvar. This is, uh, this is the Bolvar dream. <laughs> well, not necessarily because uh, you didn't get to get the big lion's roar. Because at least the coolest thing about playing Bolvar. Is for sure his entrance. Ah, well, he's gonna save the owl because I guess he really values it against Tyrion. It makes sense. For duty. Well, here the uh, Palin just tries to be really annoying with the dudes and all that, and uh, it's gonna work. I like saving the last charge of the weapon. I don't know if he's going to. Yeah. And actually, depending on number of weapons in the deck, I think saving two charges is also pretty decent. Oh, an auto barber. Whoa. I mean, it's a 3 2. Too bad you can't get his battle cry, though. I think here I like the Sylvanas drop. Or is he gonna go for a juggle right away? Okay, this is a very aggressive play. He needs the juggle here. Uh, missed he the first it. one. Yeah, he got the second one. Pretty clutch. Now there's still a 1-2 on the board, but uh, not much else. And even though the uh, Paladin board is not really the best here, it is it is pretty important uh, just to have uh, more creatures than the Warrior. That puts the Warrior in a spot where he's you know always behind on the board, even though the Warrior may have bigger creatures and the Paladin's all 1-1s. Uh, it becomes a situation where uh, inevitably the Paladin draws into some kind of equality combo and catches up. For duty. Toe! Oh, oh, Brutal! Man. Oh man, wow. that is the last, that's the last juggle of that guy. <laughs> oh man. Wow, you throw me a knife, I throw you a bomb. The uh, hostie is taking a lot of damage too. He needs to stabilize. He picked up, um, this Iron Beak Owl. I don't know if it's worth it, man. You think you just gotta... Yeah, get him. Give it up and get in? Yep. Alright. I mean, if you look if you look at Faramir's hand here, what does he have? Got a quality he's got a two card. He's got a two-card kill on Geddon. And if he doesn't use that, like, all of his deck dies to it. Including that poor zombie chow. 
Would you even play zombie chat here? Yeah, exactly. Equality consecrate on a Geddon. Oh my, that is value. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're feeling really good about that one if you're OSD. And that, that's really telling of his hand too. Yep. I have no time for games. So you have nothing. <laughs> Great. And the zombie chow is a pretty good thing too, because it bounces the warrior's health to a pretty reasonable number. Now we're gonna see Consecrate. Not even that great of a card in this matchup, usually. Now, when you look at the state of the board, just because the Talon has all those annoying things, he's technically in good shape. But uh, that Harrison is is bound to draw some kind of uh, easy answer yeah. to this. I'm definitely sensing Hosty running away here. Yeah. Oh my. Wow. Belcher up. Sludge Belcher. Is it basically the, the Belcher eats up seven dudes, man. Seven dudes. Big appetite. Yeah. Even Quartermaster wasn't like wasn't enough there. Quartermaster is like basically enough to deal with the board. The Warriors got seven cards behind. Man, he's got Death Spite too. You can pop the Death Spite this turn. I like popping the Death Spite. I like playing Death Spite and then on top of it, Fiery War Axe here and just killing off the 2 2. Yeah. Well, I think you can use the first charge of Death Spite uh, before that. So you can save the two charges of Fiery War Axe. I guess it doesn't play around Harrison, but he's, he doesn't have any cards in hand. Yeah. Aww. No sweet plays today. Yeah. I mean, he, he knew there was a possibility, too, of what he wanted. Oh, man. But... Quartermaster. Quartermaster. I, I want to see it. I want to see the punish. <laughs> Even if he does get it. Oh. Uh, here he is. Okay, I guess we'll just have to settle for the best legendary at his disposal. So. Your best? Uh, is there, the best. There's in his deck? Yeah. I think they have saw Ragnarok in one of the Pally X, didn't we? I, I don't remember. Um, but either way, I believe, yeah, really he's a, he, I believe he's dead because he just has silence. Yeah. Or uh, I guess there's a lot of ways to kill him. I, I guess he's going to keep the owl. Keep the owl. Under wrap. That's, that's actually really smart. I think he owled in a. In a previous match, didn't he? Sure, sure, but you, I mean, you never know. Oh no, he, he couldn't have. He couldn't have. Host, he's playing a warrior. He's never played warrior. So the, the I haven't actually seen that great of a demon lock yet. What does it right, exactly. look like in your opinion? He Not to mention about the lack of scary ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, when when the expansion comes around, it's like you know. So you want to avoid call out Malganis, do you? All right, let's make a deck <laughs> around that. <laughs> Yeah, and then you want to use uh, Demon Heart on Mistress of Pain. Cool. It's like that. Those are like the weird combos you see. Mm -hmm. But um, the reality is the meta will slowly shift. Like everyone will be introducing like one deck at a time that they're trying to do something a little bit different. And slowly over the course of like two months or three months, you'll see like decks change maybe 10 cards in total, which then it has a drastic identity shift. Uh, mm -hmm. Paladin's already going through that at the moment where like people are already changing enough where Paladin looks pretty different. Um, even mage, you know, that's another deck. But we're we're still in a slow transition for decks like warrior, for druid. Uh, we still have yet to see ramp druid make a full comeback. But I think ramp druid is actually very strong at the moment. No one really knows how to build it efficiently. Well, all right, we do have the druid against the warrior. No surprise there. We do have a pretty damn nice opener from uh, the druid as well. It's the turn one wild growth into the turn two innervate. Uh, Spectral Knight, and man, that guy's gonna clock in some damage. Yeah, pretty much the Yeti effect, just a little bit later, and you can't easily remove it with Execute. Wow, another wild growth. Does that really matter? You go from four directly to six, it's still nothing. Yeah, you, you gotta well, draw some kind of card uh, in your next two turns to play. Mm, again, more ramp. If that 
If that Ancient of Lore doesn't deliver, uh, I think you might be in trouble. Might not have enough cards. True. Like, going... I guess going second and drawing three ramps is okay. But going first and drawing three ramps is, is often uh, just a dead hand. Is it too slow for Faramir to have waited turn one, wild growth turn two, and then coin out the Spectre Knight and then innervate out the Ancient of War? That was also a possibility. Uh, he would have had one turn slow on everything else. Wow, combo in hand though, Yeti. Swipe, things are looking really good. Hmm. Wow. Well, two Yetis. Yeah, I don't as know if you uh, I don't know if you beat this hand as a warrior. What if Oh, I don't know. He he needs to find a way to stabilize and I don't know if he can can that easily. The only way to remove both these minions is through Brawl at the moment. And like playing anything else might be too slow. Yeah. Well, here we go. Does the armor oh, boys. theory hold true? It does not. No. No. Turns out Kickax doesn't know what he's talking about. Here it's just uh, it's just too late for the warrior to do anything, I believe. Yeah. Because in... because even if the armorsmith won, right? Yeah, I mean, like he still even, so much even now, even if somehow the warrior gets gets removal here, I don't know how it's gonna happen. Let's just say it does. It's just not good enough. Shield block into shield block. That's shield slam. Still not good enough. Nope. <laughs> yeah, still combo kill. Yep. That's pretty wild, but uh, that just shows you how hard this matchup can be. So, well, that was a quick game number two. Very quick. And under just a few minutes. Yeah. Well, then where does Hosty go from mapped out? That a lot of things have, um... I guess, because people always say Drew is a class that includes the least RNG, I suppose. But, um, when, when the matchup's that mapped out and decisions have been... The decision tree has been thinned out so much based off optimization, it really does become uh, whoever is able to get the tempo earlier. Yeah. Well, it is Paladin, and uh, well, let's let's try to analyze this deck as as we see it played. Defender of Argus is a little bit of a strange one, but that does have a lot of combos now with Muster for Battle and all the rest. Sure. Wow, that hand sucks. Okay, I think the Druid's got a pretty good chance. <laughs> well, uh, Druid's hand's not exactly that stellar either. Yeah. Oh my, that is like the worst thing you could possibly have. Yeah. I mean, it's. It's again it's the drawback of having Blood Knight. Sometimes it just doesn't do anything. And the reality is, it's a blowout card, right? <laughs> oh god. I think you dude. There's the dude. Look at him. He's the first creature to hit the board. Usually is for Paladin. Eh, not in this one. I think there's a lot of one drops. A lot of two drops, right. too. We just don't see them because his hand's pretty terrible. Yeah. You're not in this deck. Now the funny thing is, um, this thing might even get equality. <laughs> like if if Hosty had equality, mm -hmm. I don't think you have to think too hard about that. Oh, but there it is. Oh, whoa! There's that, there's that one six. Oh. He, he doesn't oh. even want to. He, he doesn't even want to go to the hand, man. He knows where he has to go. Peacekeepers yep. are very responsible creatures. He was played so fast that uh, he didn't even know how to process the order. Yep. So there goes that innervate tempo play. It basically downs a dude and takes out a battle cry of a three drop. Does one damage yep. to an other peacekeeper as well. Well, uh, Druid still looks like it has a pretty situational hand. Keeper the Grove's not much better. Mm. I think it's like uh, Palin's hand is also terrible because the one thing you really need to do here is play Muster for Battle and you can't because you have a true silver and nothing to hit. Right. I mean, I guess at least you have a 3 3. 
yeah. which can be problematic, but uh, still is, you can deal with it too. As the, the druid, just snipe it down with the moon fire. That is pretty risky though. I mean, we saw Hosty reveal Tyrion. It's true. Actually, that's a really good point. Because you know True Silver is going to... I guess you want True Silver to be used on this too, right? As opposed to like your Lothab. Yeah, you do. It's just that, like, if you're really tuned into the game, you know, that three cards in the opening hand are still there. Right. So, the like, bad things are happening right now. Oh, you don't, oh. You don't muster first. You attack oh. first. Oh. Thinking about how to, how to sequence everything, but yeah. I think even Dr. Boom is better than most of the battle. Okay. Yeah, you're right, he is. But if you, if you get a muster, you can do it with Argus. That's pretty good as well. True. This is very defensive. I'm gonna argue with the boom bots next turn. Pretty nasty. Man, that's a lot of combo stuff. <laughs> and no yeah, muscle got... next turn. Yep. Gonna ramp into it. That's looking pretty scary. At, at turn seven, wild growth. Dude, what if he hits the shade twice? Nope. Oh that man. That was a four hit though. That was almost there. That was wild. Almost. How much damage the combo for next turn? If he takes this, I think Kosi's calculating it. 22 damage. I have no time for games. <laughs> okay. Well, wow. that's pretty good. That's pretty good still. Yeah. Not bad. Okay, now there's no card that lethals here, I don't think. But it's pretty decent though. More and more damage. Hmm. Yep. What? So Oh, okay. He's a. I guess he was afraid of potentially letting Sylvanas steal it for Hulkful, but if he has Consecration, he's just dead. Oh, he is dead. He has a, a, a weapon to get through, and he also yep. has an Iron Beak Owl. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, that, that shade play is pretty questionable, man. Yeah. Like, here, here you go. Here's Lethal. I think Farmir does this once for series. Okay. He says, you know what, um, I'm so good that I, I think it's just unfair if I let my opponent, uh, if well, I let my opponent lethal me, he'll have a chance. He's gonna have to be so good that he's gonna have to beat Hosties. Like, all these Divine Shields are so annoying. For one, you'd have to be running Owls in the Warrior, I think, even to stand yeah. a chance. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. I think Divine Shields is very problematic. Uh, even cards that do the one damage, like Cruel Taskmaster, makes it even more hard to deal with because you take more, you take additional damage. So uh, this this can be very bad for Faramir. But at the same time, Hosty was the one who beat the Paladin with his Warrior, and it all has to do with the opening hands. I just feel the Paladins weren't the same. Like he wasn't running that much Divine Shield, and Hosty had like a ridiculous opening hand. So like both those things had to line up. Right. Yeah, I agree with that too. Got the owl. Owl's gonna do some work here, I think. You don't want to play it, but you're, you're going to. Well, okay, maybe not. Huh. Okay. Well, uh, is that because of like you're afraid of muster for battle? You think? Yeah. I, I think yeah. Somewhere in the back of your mind, you're just you're just worried about more stuff. Like it's still just a two-two with divine shield. I mean, it doesn't. I guess it's just too early to dedicate resources like that. Well, it's gonna be very valuable to two. Gets to get yeah. something. Well, it's a two now, two that sticks around. I've tried playing Paladin, and one thing I don't like is um, when I drop both my quartermasters. That's why I subbed it out. I'm curious if it's gonna work here, because uh, I mean I didn't run Noitrons that kind of stuff. Perhaps I, I think uh, it's it is, fine. It is the game changer. I mean, even if you just summon it against one minion, it still puts a pretty decent amount of stats, right? Mm -hmm. Or seven for five mana, so... I, I mean, it doesn't feel great for sure, but it's it's like there's definitely worse value minions out there mm. uh, that way you can get, so... Reporting. Sometimes the tempo is just too here? good. There's nothing? Okay. 
I guess nothing was the other play. It was nothing or equality. Right. I guess he does have a turn because he has Divine Shield on the Anoyotron, so he can take he can afford to take his time. He can also get another additional minion for a quartermaster. Which is looking a lot better now, right? It's the quartermaster with two minions out. I, I think just because you have two of them, you, you really should play it here. I wonder. The only now it becomes a six would nine. be the equality, but you just lose so much of the equality from your own board. How important is a card like Equality in this match specifically for the Paladin side? It's pretty important. I mean, you don't run that much late game, certainly not as much as the Warrior, so you got to hit with it. But I think Quartermaster is the play. Like, you can clear the board with Quartermaster, you don't even lose that much. Yeah. And, like, you have another Quartermaster next turn, so the recruit that survives plus the new one, you can even do that next turn for seven. Yep, decent clean up there. We might even see some weak removal coming out, but uh, I think Solanus is... Oh! Yeah, I still like those Solanus. There it is. All right, you can well. sack your entire board into Solanus if you really want. Uh. I mean, you also have a higher chance of giving a minion that you can deal with anyways. Right? Yeah, I mean, most likely he'll steal a minion that can easily get dealt with, as long as he doesn't take Quartermaster. Mm -hmm. Assuming he just, like, straight up brawls, but there's still a few turns before that happens. Hey. Now, is the equality good enough? No, it's not. Hmm. So, second Sylvanas. I'm always so wary about this. The opponent has shield block, shield slam. Actually, you don't even really need shield block at this point. Oh, you have to execute but, um... too! God, <laughs> that one's played out bad. <laughs> <laughs> Still funny. Um, what now? Maybe you don't need necessarily even need to shield block. If he just attacked the one one and shield slammed uh, his Sylvan to just armor up, he would have taken it. Now that silence might be very costly with Tyrion in hand. That might be the the part we didn't really consider. It's like the Sylvanas isn't really the best play there. Oh, so you're you right. Bait out the silence um, so you can follow up the Tyrion. That does change quite a lot. No, that's a that's a really good point, um, because now how do you deal with Tyrion efficiently? Oh, you have to toss in a bunch of minions. So the, you still have Sylvanas, but yeah. I'm assuming that this is going to be somehow dealt with. Nope. What? 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 What happened? You just gave him Tyrion. Uh, it had to be a better play than giving the warrior the best card in your deck. Yeah, like anything could have been better. Or nothing. Just not playing anything could have been better. Why? Wait, why is Faramir trying to knock off the bubble? There has to be some next level things coming on here. I don't understand oh, what's going right, on. Right now you can, um, you can Harrison the weapon. Maybe, oh. maybe it's like a bluff. Maybe right now we're bluffing for um, quality consecrate. You're right. Uh, the Harrison, pretty big actually. Like one thing that you do end up uh, struggling with is card count in this matchup. Oh, that was very sharp by Farbeer, and he gets to keep Sylvanas too. Actually, I really like that. The more I think about it, my boy Farbeer. Well, uh, Hosty also does pick up a way for him to deal with Sylvanas finally, but he's still looking for a way to combo off that equality. Yeah, I mean, the dealing with Sylvanas playing an Owl is not really doing that. Oh, 
mean, just... I don't know if you... I guess you have to cut the pyros if you're playing all this uh, Blood Knight stuff. That does make your quality a lot less uh, consistent. Muster for battle. Man, that Sylvanas just ruining the Paladin right now. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Although I guess Muster for Battle is okay though, because he's still just taking one. Well, I guess the Death Spite is out active too. It's really problematic. Well, if you do that, you would do the the Muster for Battle thing to counter right. the Death Spite. This is a pretty tough turn. Yeah, it is. You're also in danger of dying because uh, he has Death Spite active. He's at pretty full mana. A lot um, of creatures on the board. A yeah. lot of minions on the board. I wonder. And you have to be defensive, oh, but. Quickly. I mean, the sickest play would be equality and then like an ooze. <laughs> oh, man. You're right. That is so crazy. He has to taunt up here. There's just yes, no yes. way. Well, uh, gonna come down to how he's able to efficiently deal with it, or does he have lethal? I think he might. With the whirlwind, yeah, Ragnaros, and execute, there has to be a lethal in there. Yeah, I think if he um, if he just attacks with Sylvanas and Harrison and the weapon, he kills him. So he just has to whirlwind, go past the, the one the well, go past the two twos, right? Just attack with his one health minions and then. Oh, okay, this is still lethal. Too. He's, He's like, oh, that's a, that's a fancier lethal. Good enough. Yep. Clear the board. Finish the game at thirty effective health. That's how you do it, man. Style points. Well, I didn't I didn't expect Mori to take that game, but yep. I mean really it was all Sylvanas. Like Hosty had no answer. Yep. He's behind on the board as a paladin. And uh equality just didn't win. Or like super aggro druid with Undertaker. I've seen Death Rattle Druid. Mm -hmm. Just feels like strictly inferior to a lot of the other Undertaker decks. Um But I mean I guess you can still Savage Roar. I, I assume you can play druid. a mid range one. Great opener from the warrior. It looks like this is going to be a pretty even match. Whoa, Tink. Tinkertown something? I don't know, that card. That card Technician. means there's more mechs than just the Paladin Treader, doesn't it? Yes, uh, I could have Mech Warper, as well as a couple of really small minions. Can I okay, Noyotron. Sure. The Shredder's going to die to the Axe, and there's very few things that actually challenges the uh, Armorsmith by itself. So, I'd imagine the Armorsmith might actually get a kill off here. Yep, there he goes. Man, things are going immediately well for the Warrior. And I, I don't I don't know, with all these small creatures, if uh, this type of Druid deck is actually favored in this matchup. It feels like the reason that... The other druid deck is favored is because of uh, those early threats. They just hit for so much, and the spectral knights are so hard to deal with. When you right. run mechs, you have to cut a lot of those cards. Like, if, I think it's very unlikely that we're going to see uh, spectral knight in this druid deck, for instance. Yeah, but I wonder what he's made replacements for those mid range minions, or did he? Did he just draw like, like is Ancient of Lore the the top end? I have to imagine he also has Sneedle Shredder in here too. That's like another deck, another card that. I know a lot of Druid players were experimenting with because he was so sticky. I was not too happy with that card. Yeah? Disappointing? Yeah. It felt like at that stage of the game, um, like you need something more than a minion that when it dies, it does something. But yeah, when it dies, it summons a legendary minion. Yeah, but it's going to take like two turns for it to die, so it's like at turn eight, do nothing immediately, two turns later, yeah, get yeah, something yeah. that might be good. Um, yeah, you're right. I don't know. Like, just Ragnaros seems more threatening.
You gotta see it as like an eight mana Nerubian egg that pops out Ragnaros. Oh. That's what you have. That's how you have to view it. It's oh, anti-AOE. The, the opponent has eight <laughs> turns to draw a silence. Yeah. <laughs> it's anti-brawl me mechanisms or anti-twisting nether. Pretty funny. Well, uh... Husky's just really trying to deny draws. Yeah. I wonder how much it's gonna work out for him, though. Farm has pretty good things lined up here. Uh, Death's Bite challenges anything that comes out, and it'll line up a draw on his Acolyte. Well, you can deny the draw with a swipe, but I think that's a little excessive. True. Apparently not. Apparently that's what you play. That's why we're here casting. Yep. I suppose so. That was an obvious swipe. Super obvious. Oh, it does deny one card. Yeah, but Warrior takes initiative on the board against Druid. And like, I, I totally get why you want to try out mechs. And this is exactly a problem with... Um, like, why players are scared to bring a lot of like new decks to the table because you know, I'm not exactly sure if this entire Druid mech deck is fleshed out yet. It doesn't seem to play very well and intuitively. Mm -hmm. at, at least at the moment. Oh! Oh! oh. That's... That's a... It's a pretty nasty hit there. That's a yeah. 1 out of 8, right? You have, you have to top end it. You have to hit right. that one. 50 50, and then it has to end. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, 1 to 4, it's 4 options. Well, if uh, Hosey doesn't stabilize some of this damage, he might be dead. Okay, well, he does end up swiping. Gosh, this just feels so bad. More damage right back onto you. I mean, the warrior's hand is just getting better and better, and he's not, not even close to giving up board control right now. I actually just played like a Tree of Life Druid in my stream today. And uh, I just, every, every match I lost, I lost to Ragnaros. It's just so hard to deal with big minions. And the Warriors got too many of those for any Druid deck to handle right now. It's the same problem. Yeah, and back when, to back when you, to back. When bombs. you play mechs, when you give up your double combo, you have to play this type of game. Like your creatures for my creatures. And the Druid just loses against the heavier control decks, which is exactly what he's up against right now. Well, how do you deal with this then? Um... I think I like Alastraza on his face. <laughs> oh no, you you wouldn't give up such a, such a dominant game to lose the combo, would you? No. Assuming he is running combo, but yeah, that's a good assumption. You have cool Taskmaster. Yeah, you have the Cruel Task combo, so you have 12 next turn. Just push for damage. Put him within, like, striking distance. Mm -hmm. And, barring a miraculous set of cards, pretty sure Farmir's gonna lock this game away and punch his ticket to the Grand Finals. Alright, I'll say it, you're right. Yeah, yeah, well, Farmir just wanted to give Hosty a chance. I see. It's, yeah. it's for the show, right? It is. You have to make it closer and dramatic. But I mean, it's it's also like cool to see Hosty trying new decks too. Yeah, his Druid deck maybe needs a little bit of fine tuning, and I'm sure Team Archon and a few other guys can figure out how to make it optimal. But for now, the the day belongs to Faramir, as he is going to be the second finalist to face off against Peeny to be called yeah, the Hero underdog versus underdog.